Beyond the HD facelift, the Grand Theft Auto Definitive Edition comes with a slew of changes and enhancements to introduce these three classics to a modern audience. And while everything isn't as perfect as we hoped, here are some of the biggest differences we've spotted so far. Globally, the three games share a lot of the same changes across the board, namely the GTA V inspired gameplay enhancements, one of them being combat controls. Traditionally, you'll be cycling between weapons mid combat using both triggers, using the right bumper to aim and one of the face buttons to fire. More often than not, this control scheme can be a little bit hectic during those tougher gunfights. In the Definitive Edition, the process has been simplified with the welcome inclusion of the weapon selection wheel, with added slowdown a la Grand Theft Auto V. Both aiming and firing are now handled with the triggers, like you'd expect in 2021, and the slowdown of the weapon wheel acts as a respite if you're in need of gathering your thoughts during combat. Even the process of choosing your favorite radio station has changed as well, with that too receiving the GTA V style selection wheel. But the improvements aren't just for those on-foot combat encounters, as drive-bys are now much easier to pull off. Originally, you'll be awkwardly driving and using the face buttons to look left or right and then firing your weapon, which wasn't all too intuitive. But now, Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas all feature improved vehicle gunplay, with it being as easy as looking around using the right stick and firing your weapon in whichever direction your camera is facing. The GTA trilogy also has an updated navigation system featured throughout all three games. Before Grand Theft Auto 4 introduced the GPS to our HUDs, maps in GTA were pretty rudimentary with San Andreas allowing you to add a target to your map and the previous games not offering much else. But much like GTA 4 and 5, you can now place waypoints wherever you wish, with your car creating a route to your desired destination. Another much needed quality of life improvement that's been added in Trilogy is the ability to restart a mission immediately after failing it and mid-mission checkpoints for those particularly long outings. So whether you fail to follow that damn train or somehow landed in the ocean, this checkpoint slash restart system already solves a lot of problems. All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. While there's plenty of positive, quality of life improvements to be found, there's certainly some changes that are quite questionable. Here are all the odd decisions and changes we found so far. Prior to the mobile port, in the gyms you'll need to alternate between two face buttons in order to increase your power and continue gaining those reps when weightlifting. The more muscles you have, the easier it'll become to fulfill a harder workout. But now the entire process has been simplified, reducing this minigame to a single button input, which somehow has introduced a bug allowing CJ2, without any effort, lift the heaviest weights, despite having no muscle. Another holdover from the mobile version is the inclusion of an auto-climb feature, which has CJ climbing over obstacles without needing to jump, all while sprinting. This might sound useful in a pinch, but can often lead to CJ falling to his death. Thankfully, this can be turned off in the options menu. Aiming at an enemy in San Andreas included a colored reticle effect, which indicates how much health an enemy has. Green for full health, orange for half health, and red for danger. But in the definitive edition, the feature was removed and swapped out for a white outline instead. CJ no longer has a unique walking animation for when he's either skinny or super buff, something which was noticeable in every other prior version before the mobile port. Another fan favorite from the PS2 and Xbox era that didn't make the cut was the couch co-op run around LS mode. This allowed two players, as the title suggests, to run around Los Santos, causing as much havoc as they desired. Sadly, this is no more. The cinematic camera isn't included in the definitive edition either. While not a deal breaker, this certainly was a unique way to experience these cities from a different perspective. Sadly, even GTA 3's top-down perspective camera angle, a reference to earlier GTA games, didn't make the cut. Special vehicles in GTA San Andreas such as the forklift, dozer, and others can no longer have their unique animations controlled with the right analog stick. Instead, all that's left is a button prompt on the D-pad, allowing only for the maximum or minimum of any action, no more direct one-to-one -one control like in the originals. The camera, an item used throughout San Andreas, no longer allows players to save snapshots to a photo gallery. Although you can easily save pictures and videos with whatever share function the system you're playing on has, this game mechanic was removed way back on the mobile version and is still nowhere to be seen. 
A nice touch found in the original version of San Andreas for consoles was the inclusion of a blurred camera when speeding in a car or when activating nitros. The faster you're going, the more prominent the effect is and likewise with many other smaller touches like this. But it's also absent in the definitive edition of San Andreas. The same goes for other smaller visual effects such as the haze from flames, the engine wash from the Hydra, and even the jetpack as well. In Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City, both Claude and Tommy Vercetti turn their heads when the player presses down the analog stick to look behind them, another small but cool detail that was lost in the definitive edition. Mission difficulty has also seen some change as well. The infamous Demolition Man mission in Vice City adds an extra 30 seconds to the player's clock, and during the mission Cesar Villapando in San Andreas, the lowrider competition has now been made easier by removing most of the actions needed to pass, enlarging the circle to hit the button, and even warning the player of what button to press next. Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive Edition looks a lot different compared to its predecessors. Nearly every texture has had a bump in resolution and detail, from roads to weapons and even characters, with some faring better than others. Hey, CJ, strap up. Scroll Street. Funky character models aside, the rebuilt lighting system found within this updated trilogy is both a blessing and a curse. In Vice City, the iconic shopping district of Ocean Beach looks beautiful at night, populated with its many neon-lit storefronts and hotels, with pinks and greens blending together to create an 80s aesthetic that looks great in motion. But in GTA 3, the oppressive high-rises of Liberty City offer little light and can make some cutscenes and general gameplay too dark for viewing. San Andreas faces the opposite problem, though, with there being too much to see at times. Although it was more of a technical limitation of the time rather than an artistic one, the fog and light haze found in the original versions of San Andreas added to the game's atmosphere of a sun-drenched 90s LA. But now, thanks to the increased draw distance, you'll be able to spot just about everything being rendered in front of you. Most of the time, this isn't an issue, but I've got to admit it's weird seeing Mount Chiliad from the bridge near Grove Street or seeing the entirety of the map while flying around a jet, which results in making the world feel incredibly small due to the lack of fog. There are some nice additions, however, such as an enhanced detail in trees and other foliage, making the forests around Flint County in San Andreas or parks and neighborhoods around Liberty City a touch more realistic. On top of that, 3D parallax interiors are also included for a bunch of buildings and windows throughout each of the three games, breathing more life and depth into these vibrant cities. Just don't get caught out in the rain, as certain updated environmental effects are a bit of a mess. During a storm, rain falls in thick, white lines that can easily obscure your vision while driving around at night. And on top of that, being next to another body of water produces quite the odd bug as well. Despite the bugs and issues present in the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive Edition, there's no doubt there's some valuable quality of life improvements to these classic games, and nothing quite beats riding down an enhanced version of the Jewel of Las Venturas, appreciating everything the strip has to offer, or checking out some of our favorite GTA Easter eggs, which reminds me. For more on the Definitive Edition, make sure to watch our video on the nine classic Easter eggs revisited, and if there's anything else that's been changed or removed, let us know in the comments below.